friends and family. I'm Hannah. I'm Siva. And I'm Trisha. Thank you for tuning in this Sunday morning. Don't forget about our grad drive-in today. That will be from 4 to 5 p.m. located in all our parking lots. Bring a lay and come celebrate our graduates. That This won't happen without you. See you there. So this morning's worship is going to be led by a small group of our youth. We got Rin on the drums. We got Jin on the... We got Jen on the acoustic guitar, and we got Jonathan with the tambourine. Um, today's message is brought by Scott Weber. Uh, he'll be talking about SOAR and also sharing some stories about our three graduates. Uh, before we continue this worship, we'd like to show our grad video made um, to show our love to our seniors. My name is Rylan Hines and I graduated from home. I plan to attend UH Manoa next fall and upon graduation I wish to become a Navy SEAL. Graduating during this crisis is not actually that bad for me because I've never really particularly wanted a graduation party myself so I don't have to have it. One way the church can pray for me is by praying that I receive a Navy ROTC scholarship to attend UH Manoa with. Hi my name is Joshua Borns and I graduated from Pro City High School. The college that I'm planning to go to is still undecided, but I'm planning to graduate with a four-year degree in cybersecurity. Graduating in these unprecedented times didn't have much of an effect on me because I wasn't really planning to have a graduation party either. One way that the church can pray for me is by praying that I will get my college situation decided and that it will all work out. Hi, I'm Nicholas Kwan. I'm graduating from HPA. My future plans are uh, major in mechanical engineering at UH Manoa. Yeah, I mean, it's been interesting. It's definitely not how I imagined senior year going. It was, it was a very mixed experience. Um, just to pray for my family because some of them are healthcare workers. So just to keep them safe and just keep the family safe in general. My name is Casey Nakamura. I graduated from the University of Hawaii at West Oahu with a bachelor's degree in business management. Hi, I'm Wesley Lum, and I'm graduating from Oregon State in civil engineering. 
Hey seniors, good job for graduating. No, I know it's been very hard for you, but I hope you enjoyed this time in high school, and I also hope that uh, you'll always keep this memory in your heart. I'm only graduated from ninth grade, and it's already been so hard for me, but you guys made it through all of high school, so that's super cool. So have a good time in college, and don't forget about us here. Congrats, Rylan, Joshua, and Nick. Hi grads, I just wanted to say a big congratulations to you guys. Um, this whole situation going on, everything is super unpredictable, but I wish you all the best in whatever path you take. Um, congrats, congrats. seniors. <laughs> <laughs> um, good luck in college or wherever you're going to go next. Do it big. God has a plan for you.
God, um, thank you that we're here today and we're able to worship you, God, even if we can't all be in one place, that we're just still able to worship you. And I just pray that your words will speak to us through these songs and through the message. And if there's people that don't know you, God, that um, you'll just, your love will just shine through and they'll come to know you. And we just pray for the graduating seniors as they leave high school and college and begin this new chapter of their life. Um, just let them know that you're with them and just use them in ways to glorify you and your kingdom. And we just lift all these things up. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
very out of it. Sorry, COVID, we're trying to figure it all out, how to do social distancing. For some of the ushers, they're back with us this week. It's good to see live faces out there. You don't know how hard, you know, I didn't have to do much. I just did a few welcomes while you're gone, but you don't know how hard it is to speak to a bunch of pews with nobody in them and try and be funny. But, uh, but, but, but it's good to see you guys back out there. I was just looking back, and it's, it's great to have people worship. For the youth that were with us, man, some people say, some people say the youth are the future of the church. And while I tend, and I see that point, I kind of disagree with them. Youth are a part of the church, and it was awesome to see you guys up here serving in that capacity, see your smiles. I love it. I love that you... That's right. That's right. Give them a hand. You guys did a great job, and, and thanks for, for helping us out. For you guys, you can take your mask off if you want. Keep them on. Yeah, let's go ahead and take them off here. You guys get give you each a microphone. Make sure they're on. Hit the power button right there. You get that one, Nick, and, and Josh, I'll give you this one. For you guys, well, you did it. You did it. Congratulations. You are the class of 2020. All right? I was class in 1995. It's a long time ago. Long time ago. But there's been presidents. Can anybody tell me what class President Obama was in? President Clinton? Yeah, I don't know either. Right? But nobody, just like nobody remembers the class in 1995. Everybody is going to remember the class of 2020, right? Everybody's a little bit jealous that you didn't have to do your final exams, that you got to miss the entire fourth quarter, and whatever the third quarter what grade was, that's what it was, and you get to go into college without SATs and ACTs. I, I am a little bit jealous of, of that. I'm sure the junior class coming up is a little bit jealous of that, but nobody will forget the class of 2020. Well, that's good or bad. You guys have missed out on a lot, though. It sounds great, sounds, sounds all groovy. For everything you miss out on, or for everything that's great about it, there's some stuff that you missed out on, right? If you guys don't know these three young men right here, they are the class of their classes. Great young men. I've invited up, them up here today just to talk a little bit of story about their life and really give them a charge as they prepare to take on the world. Our church's mission is to know, grow, and go. You, as Sunday school teachers, since they're young, as Vacation Bible School volunteers, as, as youth group leaders, um, and just servants of the church, you've all poured into their lives. You've helped them know and grow, and they will continue to go do that. I'm still knowing and growing myself, right? And, and Sterling and, and even Masa, who, who is, is 90-something, all, we're all growing and knowing. We continue. It's a continual growth in this thing. But what we're going to talk about right now is is go, the mission to go, right? And so it's your job, students, it's you guys, you guys know and you've grown with us. It's your time to go and share the good news wherever may, life may take you, right? So I, 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 know, I know, church family, you just saw some short clips of these guys, but I wanted to give them an opportunity. I wanted to give you an opportunity to know them just a little bit more. So I've asked them to come up here, right, and talk with us. The other reason is I want them to talk to us is I only have one more chance to put a pie in your face. For, for, for those who were at senior luncheon last year, you guys know what I mean. You ready, John? Oh. <laughs> you go get them ready. Go get the pies ready. Um, anyway, that's just, you guys beware. You don't know what's coming. <laughs> Rylan says bring it. Um, but let's, let's begin, all right? You know this interview... I want you guys to know that this interview has not been rehearsed. I have no idea what they're going to tell us. But I do know one thing. It's going to get fun in here. All right? Well, guys, my first motivational quote for you is high school. It's just a little bit like toilet paper. You only know, you only miss it when it's gone. Right? When it's there, it's just there. But when it's gone, it's gone. And then you really notice <laughs> that it's not there, all right? Yeah, yeah, you, you know I've got some corny ones, so, so I'm sure there's plenty more in here, but, but they're, they're coming, all right? So that's my first, first of many. Um, I want you guys to look back, uh, or sorry, I know high school is not easy work, and it's not even enjoyable at times, but I want you to look back and share with our church family some of, some of your memories, all right? We're going to start with Nick. Nick, easy question for you right off the bat. 
your Hawaii Baptist Academy Eagles were two-time cross-country champions. You got it? Two-time cross-country champ state champions. Now, I know where you live, but all the way at top, because I've taken you home before, all the way at top, a new town uh, area, and that's a, that's a great big, pretty steep hill. So I know you didn't just do training runs at school. I know you trained during the summer and stuff, because you tell us about it. And you start out down, down the hill. What I want to know is, did you ever fully run from the Newtown driving range all the way up to your house without walking? No. No. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I've never done it either. You know, there's a, we used to live over in IA Heights, and there's a hill that I tried to run up around the state park, and there's one part, and it's probably about 10, 10 yards. And I could get there, and I could never motivate myself. Dude, those hills are tough around here. I like the downhills a lot better. <laughs> That's a cross-country runner, too. I just, just had to ask. All right, pretty, pretty easy one, right? Um, let's see. Josh, this, this is a pretty impressive. This is something you may or may not know about Josh Barnes, okay? He was valedictorian of Pearl City High School. You go ahead and give him a hand. That's, that's, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Some, something to be celebrated, all right? Your mom and dad must be super proud of you. Either that or they're ready to get rid of you. I don't probably a little bit of both. I don't know. <laughs> so Josh is the youngest. You're the youngest, right? So it'll be, be a uh, empty, empty nest once you, once you go off. You made a college decision. You said in the video, any, any choices on college yet? Just hit the power. Just be a green light. Yeah, press and hold that one. That's all right. This was me last week. I'll just press it once. See, I told him wrong. We need the mechanical engineer. Who's that? That was Nick. Oh, there we go. We're on. All right. All right. So your parents are pretty, pretty, pretty proud of you, right? Um, so you didn't give a speech for your graduation because of COVID, right? It's all, all canceled. But if you could choose one person, well, besides me, of course. I know, I know, I know that's, that's the obvious choice. But if you could choose one person to come give a graduation speech, who would you choose and why? Um... My parents. And why? Because uh, I want to hear what they have to say about how I did in school. <laughs> well, you're valedictorian. I think you did pretty well. I, think, I don't know there's much to say, right? <laughs> valedictorian, you, I think you aced that course. All right, all right. Hey, I, I think he's wanting an bit extra big, uh, maybe a car for his graduation gift. I don't, I don't know. That's, that's probably a good answer. All right, Ryland. All right, I got, got an easy one for you. You've got two siblings. Who's your favorite sibling? Me? Yeah. Yeah, me. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. You didn't like that question? I'll give you an easier one. You've been three, three youth pastors, all right? Three youth pastors yeah. while you're here, right? I think three. Here, before. Three? Three. Three. All right. Who's your favorite? But just remember before you answer the question that I get to ask the follow-on questions here, all right? <laughs> no, no. Just joking. Um, you said in the video that your goal was to become a Navy SEAL. How did you decide that you wanted to do, how and when did you decide that you wanted to do that? Um, towards the end of my sophomore year, my brother got me addicted in Hawaii Five-0, and Steve McGarrett's a Navy SEAL, and I was like, man, this guy is bad. He is the coolest man. I, he's the most manliest man I have ever seen. McGarrett, really? Steve, he, I was in, I was in the Army, you know. Can I convince you to be a Green Beret? No, Ugh. no. <laughs> Manly, <laughs> he couldn't get yeah. into a house because the door was locked, so he jumped it through the skylight. Like, all right, all right. <laughs> McGarrett, McGarrett's tougher than I am. <laughs> all right, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I cut you off. So, so Hawaii Five-O. Oh, so I started watching that, and then I was like, well, this is like Hollywood stuff. It's not real. So I started doing research on what they actually do and what their training is like. And then I was like, I want to do this. I want to be in someone's backyard without them knowing. <laughs> there you go. So it's been your dream. I know it's been your dream. You've talked about it and dreamt about it for a while, for a long time. It's going to take a lot of challenge. There's a long road ahead for you, but we hope you succeed in, in that, uh, that goal. Um, Nick, got one for you. What was one event that you participated in in youth group that you wish you could do again? I didn't get to participate, but I really wished I could have done the, the laser tag. Uh, the laser that tag. sounded fun, but that, I wasn't that, there. That was a pretty cool event. That was, that was a lot of fun. We will, uh, what, what about you, Rylan? Is there one event that you, you would participate in, you'd pick to participate in? To do again? To, to do again, yeah, yeah. 
and these, future. These are ideas for me. The church family's just listening on right now. But the I would. Pastor, I, I need, wish that I, I could have got to go to Mfuge again. Mfuge, Mfuge. All right, all right. We got we got some stuff to add to our calendar, youth leaders. All right. So uh, we'll get to working on that. Um, oh, I missed one. Let's see. Let's see. Well, let's go to Josh. Uh, haven't talked to you for a while. You've just been kind of kind of sliding sliding by here. But uh, um, do you have any posters on your wall? No. No posters on your wall. All right, if you were to choose to put one poster up there of a person or a saying, what would it be? Who would you put up there? Not your parents. We know your parents do a graduation speech. <laughs> I put a poster of God. Of who? Of God. Of God. Oh, see, I told you guys. I told you guys. I'm going to kick you out of the chair if you come up here and give me Sunday school answers, all right? All right? Good grief, these kids. They, they know they're on TV. All right, Rylan. Who's your favorite superhero? Captain America. Captain America. Got one more for you. Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Oh, I know why you asked that. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Because Hannah told you. Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Uh, I don't know. T-Rex. <laughs> I do. You're right. You're right. I do have a funny story that I've been given by 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 Bober one of Ryland's uh, siblings. So it's your favorite sibling, maybe Ian now, right? right after Hannah told me this story. No, because Ian told me he told you too. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, so so when Ryland was 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 young, apparently he could say, you know, when you say a dinosaur name, you get Tyrannosaurus Rex and Stegosaurus, and like, give me some of the harder ones. I I don't know. I know like. Pachycephalosaurus. I don't know. Yeah, see that one right there. That one right there. I can't even say it. I can't could, could uh, never spell it, and I can't say it. But 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 he would go. Um, he could say all the names of the dinosaurs because he loved dinosaurs when he was young. But if you asked him a word like ambulance, he couldn't say ambulance. Right? It wouldn't come out ambulance. <laughs> I think it's what he said. And then uh, and then when he went to, he loved dinosaurs so much that when he went to Long's Drugs, and these are funny stories, you guys. They're meant to embarrass you a little bit. They're 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 funny. Um, he went to Long's Drugs, and people would say hi to him, and he'd walk along Long door, drug, Long's Drugs roaring like a dinosaur, and he'd say, rah, on the dinosaur day, so he's known as the dino child. So yeah, you did get roasted a little bit. Your, your family did give me that one to, to hit with you, but thanks for, thanks for playing along. Um, two more questions, and then we'll, we'll move on. What, and this is for all of you, all, all question. If you had a dream car, dream car, what would it be? Uh, the W Motors Lycan Hypersport. Why, why do you like that one? Uh, it was the car in Fast and Furious 7 that they drove through the buildings, and it looks cool. It's fast. What color? It's red. What? Red. Red. Do you need to go red again? Not neon green or something? I'd go red. Red for sure. There we go. How about you? Uh, Bugatti Veyron Supersport. A what? Bugatti Veyron Supersport. Bugatti. A Bugatti. All right. All right. Why is that? Because. You can only do 55 on the interstate. Well, I mean, I'm faster than the cops, so I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> well, because, I mean, not a lot of people have that car. It's just, like, novelty. Yeah. It's just cool. I've wanted one since I was a little kid. Got it, got it. And what, what about you, Nick? Uh, I don't know a lot about cars, but I'd probably want, um, like, a mystery machine so that I could take my dog with me and go Mystery places. machine. I like it. I like it. A little beach cruiser set up. Yeah, I like that. Would you paint it just like the mystery machine, or would you have, you got a certain color scheme? Yeah, sure. I don't see why not. Plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> why not? <laughs> nice. And, and the last question. Um, we'll start back with, uh, uh, with uh, Ryland on this one. Um, if you had unlimited funds to take a gap year from college, where would you go and what would you do? Um, I'd probably go to Texas to just, I don't know, shoot guns and have fun. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Ryan told me one, one thing he wants to do for graduation is go to a gun range and shoot, shoot some guns. So he's, he's into that, he's enjoying that. My Navy, my Navy SEAL right there. Um, what do you what do you what do you got? Uh, probably Japan or South Korea. Japan or South Korea. Yeah. What would you do there? Spend a month. Spend two months. Yeah, probably a good couple months in, over there, just because it's so cool over there. So many things um to see sites. So just uh, Le- see like what, what it's like. Um, probably visit some shrines. Go up to Mount Fuji again. Things like that. 
Cool, cool. All right, Josh. I know you're super excited. <laughs> your turn. Um, I'd probably go back to Japan to visit grandparents. Yeah, take and a I, month, just kind of hang out over there. Yeah, and I always feel relaxed when I go to. And what's that? I always feel relaxed when I go to Japan. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, it's good. No, it's good. Feel good memories is a place you want to go back to, right? Gap year, go there, relax. That's what you're, you're supposed to do on a gap year. Um, whether, whether you're for them or not, it's, it's good, to, good to have that relaxation time. All right. For our church family, I want you guys to know this. These are your three high school seniors. When you come to the graduation drive-by today, and this is my, uh, my little plug for it, uh, advertisement. When you come to high school, graduate, uh, high school drive-by, these are the three seniors that are going to be out there. Our college graduates won't be there. So bring three ladies, bring three cards. It's going to be a social distancing event. We'll have a table. Um, if you want to come up and they allow it, you can come up and give them a hug, but that's between you and them. But if you don't, if you just want to come social distance, come out, celebrate the three seniors. They've worked really hard. They're part of your church family. We'll have a table set up, put a lay on the table, they'll be able to get a lay, give it to them. Honk your horn, um, wave at them, bring some signs, what, whatever. The point is, just, just, just come have fun and celebrate these three amazing young men. All right? For those of you watching online, I just wanted to let you know, I am not an ordained pastor. All right? I've never taken a class in Hebrew or Greek. In fact, I had to ask Ryland what good by was in Japanese. That's how terrible. That's how, that's how, that's how dumb I really am. If he tries I, to I pronounce really it, he's still going to pronounce it wrong. I, I'm not even going to try. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I'm really not that smart, guys. But don't let me scare you away if this is your first time booing our church with us, right? Our senior pastor is super smart, and he's going to be back with us next. Don't laugh, guys. He is. He is. All right? All right? <laughs> but he'll, he'll, he'll be back next week. All right? But this may be my last opportunity to impart my limited wisdom into these young men's lives. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will speak a word as I speak to them and to your life as well. So you guys sit back, relax. You've done the talking so far. I promise to be quick as long as I stick to the script. Now you guys know me though, right? And sometimes I'll start on a point and I'll, I'll chase a rabbit and it'll go that way and it'll go that way and you'll go that way and you'll be like, where's, where's your point? I thought, it was, I thought it was to be a light. So, right? So you guys are going to prevent me from doing that. Help me out. My points today are be a light, don't miss an opportunity, and soar. If I start weaving and going, I want you guys to go like this. All right? That's the rabbit that I'm chasing. Okay? You shoot the rabbit, and I'll know to get back on the point. All right? And then we'll finish a lot quicker and get on out of here and get on to, to the rest of the events that we're going to do today. So here we go. Be a light. When you guys were young, were you ever scared of the dark? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how it was around your house, but I tell you what, at my house, it just I have a, for those of you who don't know, I have a five-year-old son and a, and a, a just-turned eight-year-old daughter, all right? So, so when it gets dusk at my house, my kids, they refuse to go to their rooms. They'll back and forth all day long, but as soon as it starts getting dusk, they refuse to go to their rooms alone, right? Now, they know where the light switches are. It's not like I've a mean, terrible dad, and I'm like, okay, it's six o'clock at night, I'm going to go hide the light switches under, the, under this, this lock box so, so my kids can't get to them, and I can just laugh at them as, they, as they're terrified on the way back to, to their room, right? No, I don't do that. I don't have a hidden lock box. But unless I go back with them and turn on the light, they don't go anywhere near that room, all right? Now, it's the same room with the same things in it, whether that light's on or not, whether it's day or night, it's the same exact room. The light didn't just turn on and automatically scare all the boogeymen out from under the bed or the monsters out of the closet, right, just because the light came on. No, it's, it's the same exact room, but that light, that light makes them feel safe. Share a verse with you. If you've got your Bibles, you can turn with me today to Matthew 5, 14. All right, Matthew 5, 14 says, You're the light of the world. You're a light for everybody in this world. If people build a city on a hill, then other people can see it easily. Nobody lights a lamp and puts it under a pot. He will put the lamp in a high place. Everybody who's in the house can then see the light from your lamp. You must be sure that your light shines well. Then you will give light to other people. They all see the good things that you do. Then they will praise God, who is your Father in heaven. Right? Guys, listen to this close. If people don't know about our relationship with Jesus, then they're going to remain in the dark. All right? It's your job to turn on the light. 
remaining in the dark, that defeats the purpose of his and our lay, short layover here on earth. If we're going to be effective in the role that Jesus gave us as followers, then we need to be visible. Just like I turn on the switch for my kids, and they discover their room is completely safe, you go be a light in your campus and on your community. Don't, but be careful, okay? Be careful. Don't let your Christianity define your faith. Rather, let your faith define you as a Christian. Be kind and love others. Fight for justice. And respect those who are put in charge of you and those who are appointed as leaders over you. I will give you a gift, right? They say that, that you'll remember what I talk about, and, and you guys have probably already forgot, but they say, they, just, just to be generous, they say you'll remember about 15 minutes what I talk about, but, but to give you guys a reminder of what I've talked about today, I'm going to give you a reading lamp, all right? So you need a reading lamp so you don't disturb your, your roommate in the dorm or, or, or uh, just turn out your light, have a reading lamp, lots of studying going on in college. And this is a reminder, right? This is a reminder of my first point. I don't want you to forget. When you use this light, I want you to reflect on your day. Will you light on your campus, in your community, or for your friends? And just think about that, right? This is going to take us to point number two. Don't miss an opportunity. Now, the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he'd walk up and down the shores and up and down the roads, and he's searching for disciples, right? And he probably already knew who was coming and, and, and who he's taking along with him. But, but Matthew 59 tells us of one time an unknown person said, Lord, I'll follow you. Just tell me what I have to do. Or, or I'm sorry, Lord, I'm going to follow you, right? But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Ultimately, in that encounter, Jesus dismissed this person, and that person remains nameless to this day. We have no idea who he is. Dead, gone, forgotten. Now, counter that with the calling of Peter and Andrew and James and John. Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two brothers casting a net in the lake. Now, you guys know I love fishing, right? Jesus said, come follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Uh, you, got, you guys, in, in the Pearl of Pearls out, there's a picture of a fish, and I didn't intend to brag about my fish. It's just a story I wrote, but, but you'll, most of the church congregation will see that. But you, you guys know that I love to fish. Now, when I tell my wife I'm going fishing, I say, I say, I'll be home at noon. And ultimately, the fish won't start biting until about 10 minutes before I'm supposed to leave, right? And so, so then, then I'm like, what do I do? I told my wife I'm going to be there at noon, but, but the fish are biting. And usually, I choose a fish and get in trouble. But, 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 but I digress. See, you guys got to shoot the rabbit because that's not in my script. I, I'm, I'm chasing, I'm chasing. I, you got me talking about fishing, and it's all I can think about now, right? Got, so, but anyway, God was walking along. He saw, saw uh, Matthew and Andrew. He said, come be, come be my disciples. They're casting their net. And I don't know if it was a good day or a bad day. I don't know what was going on with them. And they took the opportunity. They said, yeah, I'm going to follow this guy. And remember, Jesus wasn't well known at that time. He wasn't, he, he'd done a, a few miracles, but, 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 but it, was, it was just an opportunity that they saw and something in them said, yeah, I'm going to follow you. And they put their nets down and they followed him. And they went on and got James, uh, James and John, right? Remember the unknown man missed an opportunity. These men, these men, we still know their names to this very day. Over 2,000 years later, we talk about them. Uh, in messages at First Baptist Church, Pearl City. Okay, it's pretty crazy. Sometimes it's going to be Jesus that you hear a clear message from, and sometimes it's going to be others. For me, I was working as an airline dispatcher and a traffic manager at Airlines Flight Operations Center. And I loved what I was doing. And I thought I was going to do that type of job for the remainder of my career. One day my boss walked in, and he took a look at me, and he said, Scott, I think you should apply to be an air traffic controller. I've just opened it. To, to off the street hires and first time ever and if you apply now you can get in before the age requirement, requirement maximum age requirement to, to get in so I went in I said okay right <clears throat> where am I going I'm chasing rabbits again <laughs> my boss said Scott I think you should be applied to be an air traffic controller he said you can basically do, do what you're doing here but you get double the pay and you get a nice pension at the end right who wouldn't want that but it meant changing jobs. It meant leaving where I was comfortable. It meant I had to move with my family, give up my flight benefits, and we just had some nice trips to Australia and Singapore and different places on flight benefits that we paid very little for. As, as you know, the airline benefits, are, they're pretty good, right? And so I'd have to give up all that. I was comfortable. 
but I went ahead and applied. And why is that? Well, for me, the decision was pretty easy, because when your boss walks in and tells you to apply, and this is just advice for later on in life, when your job, boss walks in and tells you to apply for a job, it either means, one, he's a really good guy and has your best intentions at heart, or two, you're about to get fired, right? But, but either way, you should probably go ahead and apply. So for me, it was a no-brainer. I filled out the application. Now, after 10, when I received my job offer, they said I was going to Hawaii, celebrations all around. It was great. We had luau's in Florida that we didn't even know how to do a luau like they do out here. But, but we thought we did, right? We got some fake lays and we, we, we had some, some pork and, and, and we, we, we no, no, no uh, uh, poi or la la, that's for sure, because they don't know what that is back in Florida. But, but we, we, had a, we had some luau's to celebrate us going away and, and coming to Hawaii. Our friends were jealous and, and excited. But, but let me tell you, after 10 years out here, I came to First Baptist Church, Pearl City, and began to work in the youth group with you guys. That's when I met each of you, right? And it was a conversation with you, Ryland, right, at 49er Diner, just after Jeanette had stepped down as youth pastor that led me to step up in the role I'm currently serving in as your youth coordinator. Now, I don't know if it was the chicken and waffles talking that morning or, or the conversation that you and I had, but, 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 but it led me to, to, to come to Sterling and say, this is kind of the direction that I would like to see you, our youth group go, right? And so, so we sat down and talked about that, you and I did. Well, it was never my intention to serve in lead youth coordinator role. God has challenged me as I continue to evolve in this role. What I thought was a temporary assignment has turned into an opportunity to use my talents God has given me to further develop some areas that need help, like public speaking <laughs> and Bible teaching. But we're working on those, right? We have some pretty fun events that we're, we're, we're doing and, and able to do, but we'll work on their other areas. The point is, don't miss an opportunity. All right, because you're afraid of change or something different. You never know where that path will lead until you start down it. So what's point number one? Anybody? You guys remember? Be a light, right? Point number two, don't miss an opportunity. And finally, this is a new chapter in your life. God wants you to soar. You've had a ton of success through high school, but that's just the beginning. And I don't want to be a downer, right? But the hard work begins now. It really does. You guys, you guys have worked hard, but the really hard work begins now. You, know, you guys know you'll face challenges? You know you face challenges. You've been told that. You have challenges. You're even going to have some failures when you go out in your future. I think we all know that, right? I hope you guys have a ton of success early and often. I know you guys will, but failure is going to happen. It will ultimately happen. And when it does, I want you to know that you aren't the first to experience it. There's a prophet that talked about young men and youth many, many years ago before Christ, named Isaiah. In Isaiah 40, 30, he says, Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men will stumble and fall. Right? You're going to make unwise fi financial decisions. You're going to have failed ventures. You may even make some irrational relationship choices. You'll speak hurtful words and leave helpful words unspoken. We all have. When you get to be my age, you're going to look back and remember the road bumps you had in life. But you'll also see how those bumps launched you to a new opportunity. All right? You guys know Tim Tebow? Tim Tebow? Yeah? I think, uh, what was it, 19... I know, 2000, but, but, but uh, probably I, I should have looked this up. When, when, when did the Tebow, right? Remember the craze on, on, on uh, social media? The Tebow effect? Everybody's going around and before the ice bucket challenge, and uh, was it, you, are you guys too young to remember that? Maybe, maybe, maybe but there's a, Tebow would always kneel, take the kneel because his faith after every touchdown, you know, and so, so there's a social media craze where it's called the, the, the Tebow, where they, everybody was Tebowing before they'd plank or owl or anything else they did, right? So, so Tim Tebow was a very successful Heisman Trophy winning college quarterback, okay? He was loved on his campus. I like the guy, Florida Gator, but sometimes he was shunned by others and the media for his faith in Christ. But in his book, Shaken, Tim says this, don't let the highs and lows in life dictate who you are. One thing can change everything. A win, a loss, a smart decision, a bad review, a season of success, or a season of failure. All right, during those times, don't look at who you are, but remember whose you are. I wanted to be a medevac helicopter pilot when I left high school. Right? I've got contacts, I've got glasses. When I walked into the Army flight 
doctor's office. He stamped my papers right away. Blind man walking. Boom. Done. Right? I, I was over. That was it. That was it. I tried. I succeeded. I knew as my eyesight was bad. I knew what the limitations were. I'd studied it, but I thought maybe, maybe I can read that chart back there and guess F G H T Z V. Is that right, doctor? No. Blind man walking. You're out of here. He just looked at me like I was crazy. And so, um, after 25 plus years, I'll tell you, I don't have a single hour of helicopter flight training time in my logbook. After four years in the Army, I tried to get into the Air Force just to be closer to aviation. I hit a time of drawdown when they weren't taking any new officers or officer transfers. I knew this, but I went ahead. I was resilient. I took the test, every test I could take. I sent messages. I talked to the people I knew, uh, the senior officers in the Air Force that I knew, and, 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 and just, just tried to do everything that I could until every door was finally slammed shut, right? At that point, I made the decision to attend, to get out of the military and attend airline dispatch school. My wife will tell you when I married her, I promised her we'd be in the military 20 years and have a great career and go all over the place, right? After four years, that was it. That was it. Was I a failure? Yeah, sure, I never got to do what I wanted to do. Those were my dreams. Those were my goals. But ultimately, we'll listen on. All right. I made the decision to attend the airline dispatch school and eventually found a job with the airlines. I quickly found out that I loved working for airlines, as I've told you earlier in the message. Well, I was initially super bummed about not, not the opportunity to not fly helicopters in the Army. Looking back, I got to enjoy a four-year honeymoon with my beautiful wife in Germany and Italy that may have been different. I had been given the chance to fly helicopters. From there, I had the opportunity to work for the airlines, where I met the boss, who ultimately led me to become an air traffic controller, a job that I think is the best job in the entire world. I know, Pastor, you probably think Pastor in this church is the best job in the entire world, <laughs> but, but it's not. Air traffic controller is a, is a pretty cool gig, but you guys don't have to lose, worry about losing Pastor because you've got to be under 31 to get in, so... so so, so, so you're safe. His senior pastor will stay here. But, but, but let me tell you, it's the best job in the entire world. It, I think it is. Don't let your failures defeat you, but use them as a springboard to the next opportunity. Andy Sorkin, you guys know who he is? The Hollywood director, um, wrote A Few Good Men and television series West Wing, uh, along with uh, The Social Network and some other, some other movies he produced. But he says this, you're going to fall down. But no one cares how many times, as long as it's one fewer than the number of times that you get up. Before Andy Sorkin said this, the prophet Isaiah said something similar. You remember Isaiah 40:30? We talked about it a little while back. It said, even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But the passage doesn't stop there. That was just the speed bump. That was a speed bump for the young men back in, in Isaiah's day, right? Here's the springboard to your new opportunity. The rest of the verse goes like this. Isaiah 40, 31 goes like this. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. As you guys enter this new and exciting season of life, I want you to remember this word to you. Be a light. Walk with Jesus. If you walk alone apart from Jesus... You will stumble through your circumstances. But if you hope in the Lord and walk with Jesus, ultimately, you'll soar. And that's my prayer for you guys. You guys, bow your heads. Let me pray for these youth. Pray over them as we send them out into the world. Um, we love you guys. I think you're awesome. Thanks for being up here today. Uh, let's, let's pray. Dear God, as we reflect on you, reflect on your goodness, reflect on what you've done in our lives. Father, just... Uh, these, these three young men, we've been praying for them, praying for their, their lives as we do our youth, that they, that they make it through high school, that they get there, they're there, they've succeeded, Father. They, we, we celebrate their accomplishments today, but now they have the next opportunity, the next challenge in life, Father. And we pray as, as you send them out, you keep them safe, that you would be there with them, that you would walk with them, that they would walk with you, Father. And as a church family, we pray for them, we pray over them, that you would bless them, bless their lives. Help them to honor you, Father. Thank you for Ryland. Thank you for Nick. Thank you for Josh and their faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen.
this morning as we end our time together we want to do a song that we never did in church before the title is where you lead me and we want to dedicate it to the class of 2020 and we hope and pray that no matter what happens in life that they continue to follow God day in and day out. My word is life A thousand road, a thousand ways So why am I so afraid to move Across the line I'm stepping out, so come what me. I'm giving it all, cause I'm drawn to you. As long as my heart is me. worshiping with us today and how about a hand for our youth don't forget this afternoon four to five the graduation drive by come out and support these seniors they work so hard and they finish high school 
um, best wishes to you. And remember, continue to follow God. Next week, it's going to be Father's Day. And our very smart senior pastor will be bringing up a message. And finally, we're opening our, our church. So we hope to see you next week in our sanctuary. We'll have an overflow room in the Shaka Shack. Please continue to check back on our social media pages and our website, www.fpcprocity.com. As uh, we continue to give you updates during the week, things are constantly changing. Thank you for joining us online too. And for the people here, please remain seated until the usher uh, excuses you. Have a great week, everyone. Aloha.